welcome to my channel. My name is Joanne. Thank you so much for joining me. It's a bit awkward because I haven't made a video in a couple months, but I've been super inundated with work, school, all of the above. But now things have settled down. School is over as for now. The semester is over. I decreased my workload by a lot. My applications are submitted. So everything is pretty, it's pretty much leveling out right now. So I have time to make a video. I'm well into the application cycle. So as of right now, today is July 3rd when I'm making this video. Exciting news, I actually have gotten a few interviews so far. A few of them are in person, a few of them are in Zoom. So I will definitely be making a video about my experiences when the interviews happen. But today I'm coming to you with a video about my CASPA application and my stats that I had for this cycle. I'm super excited to share those with you. I do wanna give a disclaimer. What I'm sharing is very personal information. I'm not sharing this to brag in any way, shape or form but just to share my stats if you're interested. So if you are interested, make sure to keep watching. If you don't mind giving me a thumbs up and subscribing if you wanna see more content. And we'll just get right into the video. So we're going to start off with my personal information, the boring stuff. I am 21 years old. I just finished my junior year of college. So I'm going into my senior year. I reside in the state of Maryland. I've attended two schools, one being a community college, the second being a regular four-year institution. The community college was called Montgomery College, and now I attend University of Maryland. Okay, so now that we're done, that boring stuff will go on into my academic stats. First being my GPA. The way that CASPA calculated my GPA, I have a cumulative 3.85 GPA and my science GPA is 3.76. I think when I calculated it on my own, I had about a 3.89 GPA, but I guess the way that CASPA calculates it, it's a bit different. So according to them, I have a 3.85 and a 3.76 for my science GPA. For my GRE, I got a 303, very mediocre score, nothing too great. I actually took the CASPER. So the CASPER is, I, that was, that test, I just, I don't even have words for that test. They don't give you your exact score, but they give you the percentile or the quartile range. So I scored in the fourth quartile, which is the 75th to 100th percentile range, which was a surprise to me, let me tell you, because did I study for that test? No. So the fact that I was able to get within the 75th to 100th percentile range is crazy to me. I think that's it for my academic stats. So let's get into my extracurriculars and my patient care experience. At the time of submission, I had 2,500 hours of patient care experience. For my healthcare experience, I had 890 hours. For my volunteer experience, I had 1,500 hours of volunteer experience. I had 200 hours for leadership. I have around 112 hours of shadowing and I have five letters of recommendation which kind of didn't really fit there because it's not an extracurricular but I thought I might want to add that. So now we'll just get into the nitty-gritty of the breakdown of the hours and how that worked out. So starting with my patient care experience, I'm very proud of myself because two years ago, I literally had nothing. <laughs> so in about two years, I was able to rack up 2,500 hours. The bulk of those hours just happened within the past year because I took on a full-time job. So most of my hours came from working in labor and delivery. So if you don't know, I'm a labor and delivery tech slash anesthesia tech, they're kind of like, it's a weird thing. I love seeing laboring moms, but that's not the point of this video. Um, <laughs> 2,000 of my hours came from working in labor and delivery. I also worked as a physical therapy tech and I have about 150 hours from working in physical therapy. And then lastly, I'm an EMT. I have, I have roughly 250 to 300 hours working as an EMT. I would grab my laptop and check exactly how many hours I had as an EMT, but my laptop is right there so we'll just <laughs> but just know that I have around 250 to 300 hours as an EMT. For my healthcare experience this is the experience that I had just working in a healthcare setting not exactly you know working with patients per se but just being in a clinical setting. So this job entailed delivering patient food and that is where I had 890 hours. For my volunteer experience which if you don't remember was about 
1,500. A bulk of that came from volunteering in the church. I think for church volunteer, I had around 1,000 hours. So that's where a lot of my hours came from. So I am a volunteer EMT. So I use some of my hours for patient care and then I use some of my hours for volunteer. Not only that, but I did volunteer in the ER. Unfortunately, because of COVID that was cut short. So I only have about like 40 hours actually volunteering in the ED. But hopefully when all this blows over, I can get like 100 hours at least, not to add to my application because that's already submitted, but just because I like being in the ER. So I probably just continue to volunteer there. I also volunteered on campus with student events and stuff like that. So I was a part of the uh, campus activity boards and that's when I spent a lot of my time volunteering for campus events. For my leadership, again, I had roughly 200 hours. For leadership, I was a student senator. Uh, I was the chair of the Multicultural and Diversity Committee. I also was on the Senate activity boards. And I think that's it for leadership. For shadowing hours, remember I had 112 of them. A lot of my hours came from virtual shadowing, but because when I decided to start shadowing, it was the start of the pandemic, which was crazy. I'm thinking the schools that I applied to are okay with it because I have gotten a few interviews and I haven't been rejected yet knock on wood yeah that's it for my stats there and for the kind of random tidbit uh my five letters of recommendation two came from anesthesiologists which i literally love like i am so grateful for them one of them came from a nurse that she is like amazing I, I don't even know why i'm like mentioning all of this but i'm so grateful to my letter writers one of them came from an advisor that i have been working with since my community college days she has always been with me anyways and then one of them is my genetics professor i had to sneak a science teacher in there as for my verification process this was so easy and um, maybe because i applied early i did press submit on my application on may 10th and it was verified by May 11th, which is shocking to me. Like it literally took less than 24 hours. I started filling out my CASPA in my my sophomore year of college. I love doing things early. So I basically had my entire application done. Of course, with more experiences, I had to add more things to my application, but pretty much everything was done. So by the time CASPA opened, all my information had transferred over and I could submit in an early fashion. But as for the verification process, process that was all by luck the fact that it took literally less than a day to verify was all luck all in all i ended up applying to 11 schools and i submitted nine of the applications on may 10th and they were verified on may 11th I did have 11 schools that i wanted to apply to nine of which i applied to on may 10th then it was my application was verified May 11th and those two outstanding schools were non-rolling admissions meaning that it didn't really matter when you applied because they view all the applications after the deadline so I was not really in a rush to submit those um I sat on those for a little bit and I actually just submitted I submitted both of them last week so the last week of June I submitted the last two applications as for the programs that I applied to if you're interested in knowing the programs that I applied to were Baylor College of Medicine Drexel University Penn State, Radford University, University of Texas Southwestern, University of North Texas, University of Texas Medical Branch, Yale, Rutgers, and Frostburg University. I hope I'm not forgetting anyone. Oh, and a Hardin Simmons. So that is pretty much it for all the schools I applied to. If I didn't list off 11, I probably forgot them, but I'll definitely have them on the screen. I really think that's it. I think that's it for today. So I thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate those of you who take the time to watch and comment and stuff like that. If you do have any video requests, make sure to leave them in the comments below. I definitely am willing to make any video at this point. I just need to get videos out there. But again, make sure to subscribe for more videos. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!